Hey guys, I hope your holiday was fantastic. This is the first video I'm shooting after Christmas. And I have been over about the past week playing with some new products from Wet n Wild. Now I ordered all of these off of their website. I assume we will all start seeing these in our drugstores. I haven't here locally, so I went ahead and placed an order. It took a long time for it to come in, so I was waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, but we're talking about new coverage products like foundation concealer powder, and I've got some new lip products as well. So I thought in this video, I could talk a little bit about what's new and kind of review it for you because like I said, I have been using this stuff for a little while now. So for the foundation, concealer, and powder, the whole line is being labeled as photo focus. And these claim to be products that don't give any like flashback in pictures. So if you're wanting to take some good Instagram <laughs> pictures or something, you know, they claim to photograph really well. And so I have this in the shade Soft Beige. That's 365C and it says goodbye photo flashback helps eliminate white particle reflection, and it claims to be tested under seven light conditions with top smartphone models and also with and without flash. Um, I can tell you I was actually wearing this foundation in my fails video. I thought it looked quite nice on camera just, you know, in this lighting, which is really not normal lighting for, you know, just the average person walking around. Definitely not normal lighting for the whole rest of my day. I don't typically take a lot of photos with my phone with the flash on, um, but I did test it with a few and I took a couple just to show you like this morning that it really doesn't give any kind of weird like ashy or like overly white reflected type look on camera. So I mean, I don't think that's anything you have to worry about. The way it's packaged, we're talking about a glass jar here, the cap twists off, and then you've got like a little spatula. And overall consistency wise, um, as you can see, like we're waiting, it's gonna drip it's gonna go. You know, it's kind of a, a liquidy consistency foundation. Not as completely liquid as, say, a Makeup Forever, you know, water blend type of foundation that just seems absolutely the consistency of water. I would just say this is most toward the liquidy end of traditional liquid foundations. And the way I apply this is I just sort of use that little spatula and dab it all over my skin until all the product is off of it. I think you're gonna have to experiment a little bit with, you know, maybe you need more, maybe you need less. But at this point in time, with the product being so new, you know, when I pull that little wand out, it's fully loaded with product. So I can get it under my eyes, I can go all over my face. And then I've experimented with a few different ways of blending it in. Different beauty blenders versus an actual brush. And I think for this being a straight up medium coverage foundation, you can kind of maximize that the most, I think, by using a brush, a really dense foundation brush. Beauty blender, I mean, it still blends it out nicely and it will look nice and natural, but I feel like that does take away some of the coverage. So I use a Sigma F80 to blend this out, and uh, I thought it did a great job, really. Um, I've been very impressed with, right after application, how natural this actually looks on my skin, how close I can get up to my face and feel like, wow, you know, that doesn't look like some, you know, super cheap wet and wild foundation. Like, it actually looks very, very skin-like. And I think the price tag on this was like $5.99, so you really gotta consider that and think about how many brands are upping the price of their foundations to double, if not a little bit over double that cost, you know? Something about the texture that's interesting. For as thin as it is, I was picturing this as a foundation that would set like kind of immediately on the skin. I certainly didn't think it would be overboard with moisture, but yet it actually does have kind of a an unexpectedly tacky feel on the skin. Like it doesn't set immediately and even after having the foundation on my skin and setting it lightly with some powder, it's not like out and out dewy, but it is just slightly tacky on the skin. And that's just not something I run into very often. When the foundation can consistency seems this thin and it feels this lightweight really going on and blending out. I don't really expect to have any of that extra moisturized feeling. It's really going to be up to you as far as how much powder you apply on top. I mean, that can definitely affect the texture. I did a very, very light amount of powder all over my face, so I definitely am still feeling a little something there. Now, because of the look that this has on my skin and the look that it continues to have all day and it seems to have good staying power for me throughout the day, 
I'm not going to whine about that too much. This is a low cost foundation that looks really natural on the skin. It's got medium coverage and it doesn't make me look like super dried out. I am a pretty much normal skin type person. But that would have to be one of the biggest surprises with this foundation for me is that it feels like there's some moisture in it. But it's still so thin, so lightweight. So this could be an interesting thing for a really dry skin person to try. And uh, maybe you might notice you don't have some of the same effects that you tend to have with foundations that are super liquidy and light like this. But as far as staying power goes, I mean, I've been really looking at that as we get late into the day. You know, I apply this stuff in the like five o'clock hour of the morning and then I look at it 12 hours later, 16 hours later, and I'm really looking up close at my skin. I'm looking for areas where I might typically see some, you know, texture developing as makeup sits on there for a while, like right here, and also sides of the nose. And I can tell the makeup has not worn off, although given I haven't put it under like super sweaty conditions or harsh outdoor conditions, but I can tell by day's end the product is still there and it does not have a heavy or unnatural look on my skin. So all in all, I'm pretty dang happy with that foundation. Claims about it looking really good in pictures, honestly not my top concern, but you know, added bonus that it it can look decent if you happen to be in a picture here or there. Now, I also got a couple of concealers. I was really confused as I was ordering online. Which concealer shade am I? So I got two. One of them is a little bit more cool and light. That's the light ivory. And then the light uh, to medium beige has a little bit more yellow tone, a little more depth to it. And that's definitely the one that I consider to be more of a skin tone match for me. So after applying my foundation, I primarily dotted that one over areas where I needed it. I I had a blemish, I got redness around the nose, um, just some areas I want to even out a little bit more on top of the cheeks, and then I used the lightest one on like my innermost corners hoping to brighten. I also put that on like the high points of the face. And then I just dabbed over that with my Sigma F80 brush, um, and I find that that is, does a good job of blending without over blending. Um, a beauty blender works fine as well, but like I said before, um, I don't think these are the highest coverage products ever. These are pretty thin, lightweight concealers and I think in that kind of a situation you can use a little extra coverage so brushes can help with that. Also use the P84 to get me a little bit more targeted blending right around the inner corners of my eyes and all in all these did a pretty good job considering I reached for no peachy corrector you know to really help my under eye circles but I still feel like I've got brightness and I do feel like I've got additional coverage on top of the foundation. I just don't really see these concealers though as anything super special. They don't offer any additional moisture to areas of my skin where, you know, I'm going to be applying them and hoping I don't look like a crepey mess after a few hours. They really just don't give much moisture back to the skin at all. And I've noticed that I like the appearance of my under eye area better um, when I apply this foundation and use concealers like, you know, maybe my Benefit Erase Paste or the Anastasia, something that's going to be a little bit more emollient in that area. These just aren't wowing me. You know, they're kind of like run-of-the-mill, typical liquidy concealers. I don't think they even provide quite as much coverage as like the uh, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, you know, the ones with the little dabber puff at the at the tip of them. That's an example of a good drugstore concealer that just doesn't uh, dry me out quite as much as these. And furthermore, the claims with the concealer, kind of the same as the foundation, claims to photograph well, you know, and I haven't noticed any issues with those not photographing well, you know, they seem to do what they say they will do. Then I also got the Photo Focus Pressed Powder and this is in the shade Warm Light. And this is verging on just a little bit light for me to wear all over my face. The texture really surprised me. It's kind of domed up in here, um, even though it's sitting down in the compact a bit. It is a domed powder, so just seeing that I was thinking, is this going to be like a really dry baked powder? But once you just one swirl of your finger in there, the product really does come off quite a bit. So your product from the pan does seem to kind of transfer onto your brush pretty easily you're not going to be struggling to pick up powder. But that being said, it's not really the kind of powder I would classify as being especially rich or creamy or buttery. Um, if you felt L'Oreal True Match, if you felt Revlon Nearly Naked Pressed Powders, those are powders that I think you touch them and there's some cling between your fingers. This feels pretty light and powdery. It's also very, very matte. So for an oily person who was needing something to take away any kind of dewy 
oily texture of this foundation and really just mattify the whole look of the skin. This could be a good setting powder pairing for you, but if you're dry, uh, you might not love this powder. For me, being as light as it is, I just used it lightly as an under eye setting powder and boy, it I think it borders on making me look a little too dry in that area, but just for the tone, that's the place where it seems to work best for me, if this makes sense. I used it very lightly elsewhere on the face, not even enough to, like I said, really take away the texture of the foundation, but just to give me a little bit of setting powder. And in my testing of this product, I've never gone overboard in applying a lot of this all over my face, just because I know, you know, the way it feels, it feels a little bit dry, and it's also kind of light. That's the perfect formula for looking cakey. So I'm not saying this is a bad powder or couldn't be exactly what certain people need, but for me and just for the shade that I have, I'm not going to be wearing this really full on all over my face. And having not done that too much, I think I can give you an even more accurate um, explanation of the staying power of the foundation because we're talking a little bit less of a cocktail of products and more just, you know, how well does this last? So with very little setting powder on it, I think this foundation, again, lasts very well throughout the day. The concealers, the powder, Powder. They can work for you, but not the most remarkable and different type of products, you know, in this line. Now, outside of the photo focus stuff, I did get a few other new products as well. One thing that I think has been out for a while, but I just haven't been able to lay my hands on it in a store, is this highlight. It's the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder, and I got it in Precious Petals. Very, very metallic looking. I mean, we're talking just the extreme of powder highlights right here. And as you look at it on my finger, it just, the light just really bounces off of it. This is a powder I'm really not going to wear in such a full-on way on my cheeks that it's going to look that heavy. What I did do, by the way, after the whole foundation and powder concealer steps, um, I used my compact from NARS. It's the Narcissist uh, Cheek Studio Palette, which I've had for a while and just kind of recently busted out. But I used the Laguna Bronzer from that, and I used the, I think it's called the Goulet. Is it the Goulet blush? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, I put those steps on. Then I went to this highlight, and I just used my Up and Up highlight brush, went kind of lightly, tapped off the excess, and went on top of the cheeks with it. And I do think it's nicely glowy. You can control it, but I feel like I am walking a fine line with using highlights like this because they are really shimmery, and even with a light amount, I look up close here at like the outer part of my eye area, and I'm thinking I'm seeing a little more texture there than I normally would um, just for the fact that this is so shiny. So just be warned, this can go extreme and it might not be everyone's cup of tea. And then I also want to tell you about some lip products I got. Um, Wet n Wild now has some tinted lip balms out and they're calling these gel lip balms. It's saying first of its kind gel lip balms, specially formulated with vitamin E, avocado oil, and a gel complex to deliver innovation with the ultimate performance and comfort these don't feel like anything super different to me. Like, if you're thinking about stocking up on these because they claim to be something state-of-the-art and unique, they're really not. They're smooth, they're creamy, they feel comfortable on the lips. The staying power is really not very good. These in particular have sort of a thin kind of lip smackerish feel to me on the lips. Um, they're not one of those balms that has a thickness that really clings to your lips. I do prefer one shade over the other that I have here, so I'll show you both of them. Again, and these were online orders. I wasn't quite sure what the shade would turn out to be, but I have a color called Tease, and this is so, like, milky on the lips. I mean, for it being described as gel, I was so surprised to see this kind of opaque, whitened peach look on my lips, or a whitened pinky peach. It's kind of odd. Definitely not my favorite type of shade to wear, so I'm not loving that one. But the other one that I have called Play, I definitely prefer this shade much more. It's a little bit more like what you see is what you get. It's this pretty sheer coral, but there is a good amount of color to it, and it feels nice, but like I said, I was wearing this the other day, and it was with me for a couple of hours, but once you're eating and drinking, I mean, you're definitely going to absolutely need to reapply these. Pretty similar, I would say, to the Maybelline Baby Lips, maybe a little bit more slip to these. The Baby Lips have just a hair more thickness. And then Wet n Wild jumped on the liquid lipstick train, so I decided I'll try a couple of these. They're calling these the Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit Matte Liquid Lipsticks. So I got two shades. I got one that was in this sort of like 
light, more medium family, and then a deeper one. This light one, which I've been wearing throughout the video, is called Rebel Rose, and the other is Video Vixen. So um, we're talking about a wand applicator here with these, and it actually has a bit of a scoop in the doe foot. So that does hold some product, and you may find that that amount of product that gets scooped out for you is enough to get all over your lips without going back for more. I'm personally not a huge fan of liquid lipsticks, especially in weather where I feel like my lips are getting more dried out than usual anyway. I don't think liquid lipsticks offer any additional moisture back to the skin, but the benefit to some of them, you know, when they 100% set, you are going to get uh, some decent staying power out of them. The question is, do they make your lips look super parched and just unattractive because everything is so dry? These liquid cat suits do totally set. Like, I'm not able to pull off any product from my lips. But yet, when I really press my lips together hard, there's just a, the teeniest bit of cling. It's not sticky at all, but there's a little more moisture in these, I guess if you want to call it moisture, than like a ColourPop Ultra Matte. But at the same time, they still do do a good job of setting. I always feel like I get better wear and less obvious dryness. Like I know the dryness is there, but less obvious looking dryness when I go for a medium color like this in one of these matte liquid lipsticks. So I feel like the Rebel Rose is looking better on my lips. And I wore it a couple nights ago too, and I thought, okay, you know, that's that's working for me at least. I mean, I don't want anybody getting too close to my lips to look at all of that texture that's going on, but it's just not as pronounced, I think, as when you wear a really light shade or a really dark shade from one of these lines. So I also have a dark shade, and again, this is the one called Video Vixen, and the shade is gorgeous. Like, I love the color, but with wear throughout the day, I feel like this wears off more obviously, like also on the inner part of the lip because it's such a different shade than what's happening like on your gum line <laughs> on the inner part of your mouth so it really shows a lot and I don't like that and also these liquid lip colors can be a little more flake prone you know because they are so drying so anytime you're using something that creates I think a little bit more contrast with your natural lip color it's going to be seen more as it starts to flake off but surprisingly to me the best thing in this little haul and the thing that I am most like like excited about I guess is this photo focus foundation this for my normal skin type being something that has that lightweight thinness but yet it doesn't set to a totally like completely dry place that seems to be working for me it seems to have good staying power on my skin I think it looks good on camera or in pictures so I think that's the good news the bad news is there's really nothing else that I've talked about that's making me super excited nothing else in this haul that I can really say that I loved, but you know, that's the way it works out sometimes. <laughs> Certainly happy to have tested these things out for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do have some new things from e.l.f. as well, and that will be an upcoming video for sure. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.